fuck text you. morning, Billy. Good morning, Reverend Mark. Good morning, Mr. Toner. Good morning, Reverend Mark. How are you this morning? Good morning, Alice. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship on this last Sunday of summer. And what a beautiful weekend we've had for the last Sunday, uh, last weekend of summer. So welcome, whether you're here in, in Union, or whether you're in Dorchester United Church, or whether you're at home, wherever you happen to find yourself, including Dawn in Alberta. Welcome, as we gather to worship the God who is loving us through these days. Before we start, let's see here. I just want to take a moment to think about the land that we're located on, wherever we happen to find ourselves. While we are the current stewards of the land, it was not always so. We recognize that for thousands of years before Europeans and others arrived here, there were already people here who were stewards of the land. The Anishinaabe, the Arawandaran, the Haudenosaunee, and others. And before there were people, the land was. As Christians and as Indigenous peoples alike, we acknowledge that the land which sustains us all, the land on which we live and move and have our being, belongs to God, our Creator. Fred, would you do the honors of lighting the candle? Please, and thank you. Uh oh, lost my other camera. Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Thank you. Mark, can you mute everybody, please? And we sing number 381 from Voices United. Spirit of life, come. 
come unto me, sing in my heart all the stirrings of compassion, blow in the wind, rise in the sea, move in the hand, giving life the shape of justice, Roots hold me close, wings set me free, spirit of life, come to me, come to me. Okay, so I'm going to invite anybody who's joining us virtually to use the chat function to send any uh, birthdays or anniversaries or other celebrations they have or any prayer requests and I'm going to go through a couple of announcements here. Um, one is just a reminder about the book study this fall. If you are interested please let me know today because I want to order the books tomorrow so that we can get them in. So if you're interested in that study please let me know. Thank you. Um, for Union, the Unified Board meets uh, Tuesday, September the 20th at 7 p.m. here in the church, live, unless you're Gail, and then it's on Zoom. Right. And um, also, just a reminder, choir practices have resumed here Thursdays, 7 o'clock. Same is true at Dorchester. Choir practices have resumed Thursday at 7 o'clock. Everyone's welcome even if you can't carry a tune in a bucket. Um, and the September outreach here in Union is the Elgin St. Thomas and the Port Stanley Sparta Food Banks. And for Dorchester, uh, Central Board meets Wednesday, September the 28th at 7 p.m. And let's see, there was a card here on the pulpit this morning. Beautiful card. It says Union United Church. Thank you for the use of the church for our gardening 4-H club. Uh, the group had fun making jam and salsa and pickles in the kitchen. Thanks again, Super Cedar 4-H club. And it's signed by many people. I, I'm assuming all of the 4-Hers. So I will lead, try and remember to put that at the back at the end of the service. Um, so one more announcement before I check things. So remember yesterday, well, I said I was gonna be walking in that damn hill walk to raise money for, for um, Indwell. And I said, if I got $2,000 in pledges, I'd wear a clown wig. And you'll notice there's no clown wig. Mm -hmm. Missed it by that much, actually by $235. So that means that Collectively, Dorchester and Union helped me raise $1,765 for Indwell. And between the uh, facility they have open now, the one that's opening this fall and the, and the work that they're going to start at the old hospital site, uh, they will, when that's all complete, have 270 units of deeply affordable uh, housing, transitional housing, supportive housing for um, people in London. So they said they have about 900 units across Ontario right now. Um, and what else did they say? Yesterday they raised, they estimated it was going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of $35,000 because the donations that we gave were going to be matched both by uh, Canada Life and TLC Landscaping in London. So the $1,765 becomes, uh, what would that be, about uh, $5,295 if I did the math right. So thank you very much. I'm just gonna check. Um,
Oh, great. So the garden club is finished and the, the chocolate club starts next Friday. And, and <clears throat> how do you get into 4-H? Am I too old? <laughs> oh, just, just by this much. <laughs> um, so are there any celebrations, any birthdays, any anniversaries, any birth announcements, other than the fact that, that we have a guest here with us? Well, actually, it's a, a returning member who hasn't been here for some time. No birthdays? No, no babies coming? No nothing? Pardon me? Oh, D Donna, yeah, Donna, you're, you're always good for, for some new grand, great grandchildren, no? You're, you're... <clears throat> but Donna, I heard a lady on the news recently who was 99 and she just had her hundredth great grandchild. So you got 70 more to go. <laughs> okay, so let's see. I know somebody who has a birthday tomorrow. And some of you may know her too from meeting her online, and that's Yvette. So Yvette Ross has a birthday tomorrow, and she's going to be 39 plus shipping and handling. So we'll sing happy birthday to Yvette. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Okay, and I am going to see if uh, Lee and Marion would help lead the congregation in the call to worship. I will. Oh, wait a minute. I need to turn you up. Can you say something, Marion, just so I can? Yes, I will do that. Okay, thank you. Yeah. God's spirit calls to our spirits. Inviting us to worship. God's spirit calls to our spirits. Inviting us by love. God's spirit calls to our spirits. Calling us by name. Calling us to grow in faith. Calling us to be made new. Let us worship God in spirit and in truth. Amen. Thank you, Marion. And our opening hymn is number 312. Praise with joy the world's creator. Praise with joy the world's creator, God of justice, love, and peace, source and end of human knowledge, God whose grace shall never cease. So, Maker's glory, power to rescue and release. Praise to Christ who feeds the hungry, frees the captive, finds the lost, heals the sick, upsets religion, fearless both of fate and cost. Celebrate Christ's constant presence, friend and stranger, guest and host. Praise the Spirit sent among us, liberating truth from pride, forging bonds where race 
race or gender, age or nation dare divide. Celebrate the Spirit's treasure, foolishness none dare deride. Praise the Maker, Christ and Spirit, God who community, calling Christians to embody oneness and diversity. This the world shall see reflected, God is one and one in three. Please be seated. And I invite you to join in our opening prayer. Creator, your creation is awe-inspiring, its beauty and its complexity. Everywhere we look, your fingerprints are there. The swirling cosmos, subatomic particles, cascading waters, the diversity of life, both flora and fauna. So why is it we try to erase your fingerprints like smudges on a window? We deny some creatures the food and habitat they need to live. We actively try to eliminate other creatures through hunting, trapping, or poisoning. We pollute the very air, water, and soil that all life depends on. We do this because we believe other life forms are either our competitors or our resources. We believe we are somehow above or more important than they are. We are concerned only with our own benefit, and so we desecrate your creation. Oh, how your heart must be broken and your anger stirred at what you see. Remind us that you created us to be faithful stewards of your creation, not destroyers of it shatter our selfish misconceptions that we would be filled with awe and wonder at your creation once again grant us the will to put an end to our sacrilegious ways renew your creation for your sake we pray amen
<laughs> and now she's gone platinum blonde. Okay, let's see where's. <clears throat> so let's see, uh, about two dozen children today. Good. They're all God's children today. Um, <clears throat> so let's say you wanted someone to draw a picture of you. And you wanted the picture to be a good picture of you. Is that reasonable? You want a good picture of you drawn? You want a picture? How would you go about choosing the person you wanted to draw the picture? Oh my, I could tell the teacher would be really, someone that liked you, Nan? Somebody who has some artistic talent and knows you well. Yeah. Like, would you pick this artist to draw a picture of you? It depends on whether you want to keep the picture or not. It depends on how old the, the artist is and whether they're related by blood too, right? <clears throat> or how about this artist? Yeah, much better. It's, it's funny, eh? Same three things. There's a bird, a car, and a person. But obviously different skill levels in artistry. So after looking at those, you, you would pick the second person. And I bring it up because in the scripture story today, Jesus is telling a story about a boss who has a worker. And the people pay attention to what the worker is doing. And based on what the worker is doing, they decide whether or not they like the boss. So if the worker is being unfair to the people, then the people don't like the boss, do they? And they might complain to the boss about the worker. But if the worker is being fair and helpful to the, to the people, then people would have a good impression of the boss, right? Yeah. In, in some ways, it's like, those, like these pictures, right? You take a look and you judge the artist by what you see. So they're judging the boss by what they see in the worker. And I think one of the reasons that Jesus tells this particular story is because it reminds us that we can be just as important to God as the worker was to the boss or as the pictures are to the person drawing them how we treat others is for them a sign of how God treats us and others. So when we treat people fairly, when we help them, when we treat them with grace and compassion, they're kindly disposed towards God. But if we're mean and nasty and angry and unfair with people, then they form a negative image of God. Jesus wants to remind us to treat others the way God would treat them, with fairness and grace and compassion. And so we pray. Dear God, thank you for reminding us of how good you are to us and how important it is 
that we treat others as you treat us so that everyone will know your goodness. In Christ's name, amen. Okay, and our hymn is number 291, All Things Bright and Beautiful. All things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small, all things wise and wonderful, in love God made them all. Each little flower that opens, each little bird that sings, God made their glowing colors, God made their tiny wings. Oh, a river running by, the sunset and the morning that brightens up the sky. The cold wind in the winter, the pleasant summer sun, the ripe fruits in the garden, God made them every one. The rocky mountain splendor, the lone wolf haunting call, the great lakes and the prairies, the forest in the fall. God gave us eyes to see them and lips that we might tell. How great is God our maker who has made all things well. All things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small. All things wise and wonderful, in love God made them all. Consider the vast abundance of creation. The beauty of the lilies in the field, the flight of a chimney swift, or the unlikeliness of a duckbill platypus. It's altogether overwhelming and awe inspiring. With gratitude, we respond to the one who has created it all and blessed us with the gift of life. Our tithes and offerings will be received either electronically or um, through e transfer or. Um, by check in the mail or by dropping it off in the mail slot at the church or the offering plate at the back and maybe Valerie would carry it up while we sing. For the gift of creation, the gift of your love, and the gift of the Spirit by which we live, we thank you and give you fruit of our hands. May your grace be proclaimed by the gifts that we give. Holy One. We worship you by giving back to you a portion of all that you have lavished on us. We give it that it may be used to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, house the homeless, comfort the troubled, and so much more, so that all may know your blessings in their lives. Bless all that we offer. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Are there any prayer requests this morning? Would 
John Thistle, Don Thistle. Okay. Any others? Mm -hmm. Any others? And there's none online. Going once, going twice, let us pray. We thank you, compassionate God, that you hear the prayers of our hearts. We pray for your church, that it may be freed from apathy or its focus on institutional survival, that it may return to its calling to transform the world. This week, we pray especially for Forest United Church and their pastoral charge supervisor, Pastor Kerry Wagner, as they work together to find a new spiritual leader. We pray for the people of the world, especially this week, we pray for the people of Argentina, Paraguay, and Uruguay. We pray for all who rejoice at a baby's new birth, for all who mourn when the circle is incomplete, when a friend or loved one has died. Especially, we pray for the friends and family of Jim Chaplo, Burl Geddes, and all who mourn the death of Queen Elizabeth II. We pray for all who are grateful when their work meets with success and for all who suffer because no work is to be found. For all who are bored, not having enough to do. And for all who are tired, having too much to do. For all who are ill or dying, awaiting medical intervention or recovering from medical treatment. Especially we pray for the Reverend Jim Evans. Mary Kaiser, Marge Lanning, Glenda McMillan, Marlene Parrish, Doreen Snow, Mac Toner, and their loved ones and their caregivers, and those known only in the silence of our own hearts. Thank you for hearing us in every situation of life. Help us to support one another always, rejoicing with those who rejoice and weeping with those who weep. This we pray in the name of the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Okay, so I'm gonna see if Gail will unmute and- Sure. Oop, wait a minute, I have to turn you up, Gail. Okay. Okay, thank you. So we're going to be reading Psalm 79. O God, the nations have entered your domain, defiled your holy temple, and laid Jerusalem in ruins. They have let your servant's body for a scavenger like uh, birth. Words, 
uh, the flesh of you faithfully once for her breath with her beast. Their blood was shed like water around Jerusalem with none to bury them. We've become the taunt of our neighbors, mocked and scorned by those around us. Oops, How just a minute. <laughs> oh. Okay. How long, oh God, will you be angry forever? Will your jealousy with burn like fire? Burn like them, like fire. Pour out your rage on the nations that do not acknowledge you on the realms that do will not call on your name. For they have uh, devoured Jacob and dissolved our Israel's home. Do not hold the sins of past generations against us. Let your compensation come swiftly to meet us, for we are sunk very low. Help us, O oh God, our Savior, for the glory of your name. Deliver us and forgive our sins for the honor of your name. Thank you, Gail. You're welcome. Okay, let's see. Um, other piece of technology here now. So <clears throat> the prophet Jeremiah was writing just prior to the Babylonian invasion that led to the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple. Okay, there we are. Um, so just before the Babylonian invasion that led to the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple and the exile of the leaders of the land to Babylon, he saw the inevitable coming, but he did not think that the coming disaster was the result of politics. Rather, he saw the disaster as self-inflicted the people had turned from God and worshipped idols and foreign gods, and God was about to judge them for their faithlessness. And Jeremiah despairs at what he sees. Both the summer crops, the grain harvest, and the fall fruit harvest have been gathered. Two different harvests, slightly apart from one another. It ought to be a time of joyous celebration and thanksgiving to God for their abundance. But it was not so. God is far from the thoughts of the people, and there seems to be nobody who can change their minds. Punishment has drawn near in the form of the Babylonian army. So listen for God's word. My joy is gone. Grief is upon me. My heart is sick. Listen, the cry of the daughter of my people from far and wide in the land. Is the Lord not in Zion? Is her king not in her? And God replies to Jeremiah, why have they provoked me to anger with their images, with their foreign idols? The harvest is past. The summer is ended, and we are not saved. For the brokenness of the daughter of my people, I am broken. I mourn, and horror has seized me. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then has the health of the daughter of my people not been restored? Oh, that my head were a spring of water, and my eyes a fountain of tears, so that I might weep day and night for the slain of the daughter, my people. May God add a blessing on the reading of this holy word and forever write its meaning in our hearts, in our minds, and in our souls. And our hymn is number 135 from More Voices.
By earth and sky, promise of hope held high. This is our sacred living trust, treasure of life sanctified. Called by earth and sky, precious these waters, endless seas. Deep oceans dream, waters of healing, rivers of rain. The wash of love again, called by earth and sky, promise of hope held high. This is our sacred living trust treasure of life sanctified called by earth and sky precious this gift the air we breathe wind born and free breath of the spirit blow through this place our gathering and our grace called by earth and sky promise of hope held high this is our sacred living trust treasure of life sanctified called by earth and sky precious these mountains ancient sands vast fragile land seeds of our way being rooted and strong creation's faithful song called by earth and sky promise of hope held high this is our sacred living trust treasure of life sanctified called by earth and sky Precious the fire that lights our way, bright dawning day, fire of passion, sorrows undone, our faith and justice one, called by earth and sky promise of hope held high this is our sacred living trust treasure of life sanctified called by earth and sky called by earth and sky Okay, let's see. Since my other camera is not working. <clears throat> so Maybe it's because it's the season of creation, or perhaps it's all the news lately of scorching heat waves, droughts, and wildfires, of torrential rainfall and flooding, the discovery of microplastics in places as remote as the top of Mount Everest, 
in Antarctica, at the bottom of the ocean depths, and in life forms around the world, or even the recent news about the last week or so that scientists say rainwater is no longer safe to drink anywhere in the world because it's contaminated with so-called forever chemicals, chemicals that change our hormonal systems. You can almost hear what Jeremiah would have had to say about all of this. My joy is gone. Grief is upon me. My heart is sick. Listen, the cry of creation from far and wide. Where is the Lord? Does God not care about what is happening to creation? Why have they played God, destroying my creation by clear-cutting forests, overfishing the waters, and polluting everything with their chemicals? For the brokenness of creation, I am broken. I mourn, and horror has seized me. Is there no hope for creation? Is there nothing that can be done? Why then has the health of creation not been restored? Oh, that my head were a spring of water and my eyes a fountain of tears so that I might weep day and night for this destruction that has been wrought on creation. As much as today's scripture lesson from Jeremiah is a snippet of screams of despair, Jeremiah wrote not to send people into depression. But if you read the whole book, you discover that he was writing to offer hope. Jeremiah wrote to call the people to repentance and to restore their relationship with God. He was a contemporary of the prophet Ezekiel, who, in the face of the invasion of the Babylonian army, bought land, and stored the deed in a clay jar. It was a sign that someday land would be bought and sold again in the kingdom of Israel. Someday the people would return to the land. I remember seeing uh, from the Dead Sea Scrolls a, a deed that had been stored in a clay jar very much like the one that Ezekiel talks of. Repentance didn't mean that the people would, uh, did, didn't mean that there would not be a time of punishment, that there would be no consequences for the actions of the people. Now, repentance meant or that there would be a future. So yes, there would be consequences. Yes, there would be God's punishment. And yes, there was a future. There was future hope. As depressing as the news can be, I've also heard recently that scientists had discovered a simple and easy way to break the chemical bond in many of the forever chemicals in our environment. There's hope that they can be broken down so that they can either become benign or so that they can be treated further. This is a major breakthrough. And yet, hardly a word in the news media about it. All I heard was news about war and natural disaster, and the death of a monarch. And then this past week on CBC Radio, I heard a piece about tiny forests. Anybody ever heard of tiny forests? How about tiny homes? Yeah, I've heard of tiny homes, but I never heard of tiny forests before either. Tiny forests stem from the work of the Japanese scientist Akira Miyawaki. And apparently, 
there are a number of them in Kingston, Ontario. Who knew? And Hamilton's jumping on the bandwagon too. You start with a plot of land, about 100 meters by 100 meters, and you smother everything growing there with a layer of cardboard and compost and mulch, and you leave it for a year till everything is dead and all that other stuff is decomposed and blended in with the, the soil. And then the next year you plant a small, very dense, fast growing um, native vegetation. And you type and you plant four different types of vegetation. And they describe them as canopy. So the great big tall, tall trees, the tallest ones, like in this area might be the tulip tree. And then trees, not those canopy ones, but but trees that are just under them in size, trees like ironwood, not Norway maple. They're an invasive species, ironwood. And then what they call subtrees, dogwood, redwood, those kinds of things. And then shrubs, things like black chokeberry. And then you take care of them and water them and make sure that they survive the first couple of years. And, and after you get to about the third year, they just take off. And it forms a very dense, more natural forest. It's far different than planting a handful of trees in a park or planting what they did up around where I grew up, the York Regional Forest, which was a vast forest all in straight lines of a single species of one tree. Tiny forests create desirable habitats for wildlife, halt the loss of biodiversity, decrease the impact of climate change and increase the frequency of nature in urban areas. It says a single tiny forest can process 30,000 liters of rain, helping to reduce the incidence of flooding. They also help reduce the air pollution and that says nothing about the mental health benefits they have for humans who are able to visit these tiny oases of nature. As a species, we have not always been the best stewards of God's creation. And whether you think climate change is linked to human activity or not, it's hard to argue that climate change isn't happening. The climate is changing. We see it. Whether you think we have anything to do with it or can impact the future going forward, that's a whole other debate. Some will say yes and some will say no. The prophet Isaiah delivers God's message that there will be a new heaven and a new earth. And like Jeremiah's message, it doesn't mean that there will be no consequences for our actions. It doesn't mean that there will be, it, what it does mean is that there will be a future for God's creation. Climate change is here. What comes next? God only knows what we do believe and trust is that something comes next. There is a future for God's creation. And for that, we thank God. Amen.
Our closing hymn is number 685 from the Voices United. We turn to you. We turn to you, O God of every nation, giver of good and origin of life. Your love is at the heart of all creation. Your hurt is people's pain in war and death. We turn to you that we may be forgiven for crucifying Christ on earth again. We know that we have never wholly striven to share with all the promise of your reign. Free every heart from pride and free lions. Our ways of fall inspire with simple grace. Break down among us barriers of defiance. Speak to the soul of all the human race. On all who fight on earth for right relations, we pray the light of love from our to our grant wisdom to the leaders of the nations, the gift of carefulness to those in power. Teach us, good Lord, to serve the needs of others. Help us to give and not to count the cost. Unite us all to who live as sisters, brothers. Defeat our babel with your Pentecost. Embrace your call to seek justice and resist evil, love and serve others, and live with respect in God's creation. Go living out that calling and your individual ministries in this world. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit go with us this day and always. Amen. Go now in peace, never be afraid. God will go with you each hour of every day. Go now in faith, steadfast, strong, and true. Know he will guide you in all you do. Go now in love and show you believe. Reach out to others so all the world can see. 
God will be there supporting us with love. Go now in peace, in faith, and in love. Amen. Amen.